Okay, this is take three. I hope it works. Welcome to the word of the week once again. Uh, this week our word is an adjective. I really like adjectives and adverbs because they help make your communication with people much more understandable. It's one thing to describe the way you're feeling or um, the things you need with you know, simple words and nouns and actions, but when you can describe the things you need or describe how you're feeling with really rich modifiers, it makes people understand you better. So this week, our adjective is spurious. Spurious means not being what it purports to be, false or fake. So um, I thought that this was a really good word this week, particularly for the seventh and eighth graders, because you guys are going to be reading an article about fake news and how it spreads, particularly on Twitter, but also on other social media uh, platforms and why the spread of fake news is so common and why it's actually uh, fake news spreads, as you'll read in the article, sometimes more quickly and farther than the truth, which you know, if it's something fake that doesn't have a big effect on people, it might not matter. But if it's fake news about a particularly important issue, like especially a global health crisis, the spread of fake news could be, or the spread of spurious news could actually be quite dangerous. Ninth graders, uh, I want you to think about the way that spurious information can affect the way historians view the sources that they read. So, um, particularly with your middle passage reliability work last week, you should have noticed that the author of each document had a uh, significant impact on the contents of that document. So as a historian, if you're relying too heavily on a single source or a, a small sample size of sources to understand an event, you run the risk of being exposed to spurious information um, and not having an opportunity to corroborate or cross-reference that information. So uh, this week, what I want you to think about is a time that you maybe have been exposed to spurious information and then um, what or how were you, um, what was that information and then how were you corrected? And how did you feel to know that you had believed something that was spurious? So if it's something like kind of um, benign, like, you believed a rumor about somebody or you believed that, um, you know, something was happening, some like celebrity rumor or something, and it ended up being spurious, that's one thing. But if you believe something about, say, the pandemic or um, like I actually accidentally spread some spurious information the other day, um, I read that outdoor recreation sites were opened up and I was really excited about it. I read that state parks were opening back up and I told someone that I was going to go camping because state parks were open back up and she said, are you sure camping's open? I thought it was just day use. And I was like, oh, I, I guess I should check. And it turns out camping is still not open in state parks. It's just day use for recreation. So I was a spurious spreader of fake news gotta be careful. Don't speak out of turn or you are going to also be a spurious spreader of fake news. Uh, some of the really um, significant consequences of spurious news is um, in some elections, in some places, there are campaigns by organizations, not necessarily the government, but uh, certain groups that will send out information, especially in poor communities and communities of color, that the lines at polling places are really long or that you need all this identification information that you don't actually need. Um, and when people hear that spurious information and they don't know it's spurious, they believe it and then they're less likely to go to the polls and vote. Um, again, spurious information like about celebrities or about the way that, you know, musicians are beefing with one another. That type of spurious information might not be as consequential. Um, oftentimes you'll see this word like uh, attorneys or uh, public relations people will say that if somebody has been accused of a crime, will say these spurious allegations against my client. So um, spurious means 
not being what it purports or pretends to be false or fake but usually um although not always but usually it's kind of again like with flout it's like a deliberate um attempt to mislead people so once again i want you to think about a time when you have believed something to be true found out that it wasn't and um how that made you feel how that whole experience made you feel once again this has been the word of the week it's been a really beautiful weekend this weekend um According to my phone, it's supposed to rain all week, so I hope you got a chance to spend some time outside. I hope that you had a nice Mother's Day with your mother or your aunt or your grandma or whoever it is that you feel like um, mothers you. I hope you were able to wish them a happy Mother's Day, and I hope that you had a good weekend. I miss you, and I look forward to reading your work. Bye.